Python on Fire. Hello, uh, welcome to our uh, April meeting of the Finance, Efficiency, Economy, and Sustainability Subcommittee. Uh, we're going to start uh, this subcommittee meeting like we always started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Councilman Valenzuela, will you please lead us in the pledge? Yes, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The members of the subcommittee have been provided with the uh, minutes of the March meeting. Uh, do I have a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, that takes us to item two, which is our uh, February 2016 Key Phoenix Economic Indicators Report. This is uh, some really interesting economic information for the city of Phoenix that's provided to the members of the subcommittee and also the pub public. Any questions uh, or comments from my colleagues? All right. Sure, I just did want to follow up. Councilman Waring asked a very interesting question last time on the water accounts. And so we were try trying to track back through and figure it out. We think that what happened was there was a, a maybe a miscoding of a November number because when you look at all the numbers from October through March, it's about it's a regular steady increase. And so they're they're going to go back and, and try and figure that out. Okay, so Mr. Chair, so because the number didn't really seem to make no, sense, it didn't. So all right. anyway, and it even makes less sense when you look at the full at a full six months. Yes. Swing. Okay. So all right. Thank, thank you. you. That's as clear as an explanation as it could get. Thank you. Mistake. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for pointing that out and, and for the clarification. That takes us to item three, which is the Network Upgrade and Unified Communications System Contract <laughs> Award and Financing Plan. So, Chairman Gates, uh, uh, members of the subcommittee, I'm Mario Paniagua, Deputy City Manager. Along with me here is Debbie Cotton, Information Technology Services Director, and Denise Olson, our Chief Financial Officer. And in light of some issues that were raised this morning and we'd like some time to evaluate, uh, we'd like to request a continuance of this item to the next meeting so that we can look into the issues further. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion to continue from my colleagues. Make a motion to continue. I'll say. Okay. We have a motion and a second. I do have um, a couple of cards not to speak uh, on this item, on item number three. Uh, John Kelly and Dave Young, uh, would either of you like to speak on the motion to continue? All right. Well, then uh, uh, any discussion from my colleagues? All right. All in favor of the continuance, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Takes us to item four, which is the Small Business Enterprise Program. Chairman Gates, Mario, you're still with us. I Thank will you. stay here with, with you, uh, but with me, uh, joining me for this item is Don Logan, our Equal Opportunity Director, Morning. Kenny Knudsen, uh, our, assist, our, our Assistant Streets Transportation Director, and our City Engineer uh, that oversees the, the, the contracting for procurement, for capital construction procurement, and uh, Denise Olson, our, our CFO, is still up here at the table as well. And so uh, with that, I will turn it over to Don Logan to give you an overview of the SBE program, and then we'll talk to you about uh, re the recommendation moving forward. Mario, thank you. Commissioner Gates, members of the subcommittee, we're here to update you on the Small Business Enterprise Program. Uh, the SBE program is a small business enterprise program that provides small businesses enterprises with opportunities to participate in the city construction and purchasing. In terms of history, the SBE program, as you may recall, some of you may recall it, the program was implemented in July 2010. Last year, in June 2015, staff came back and uh, requested an extension to which the council uh, so graciously accommodated the one-year extension. And we're here today in anticipating uh, the sunset of 2016, requesting an additional extension, of which we will explain to you what has transpired over the course of the last 12 months and why we think the extension is, is warranted. 
staff has held five industry specific focus group interviews as part of evaluating different types of program enhancements that we think will improve our SBE program. And doing so, I share with you there are five components that define the program. Certifications, construction and subcontracting, goals compliance, procurement of goods and general services, as well as small business assistance. The five groups that we addressed included chambers of conferences and business advocacy groups, all of the major chambers, the Greater Phoenix, the Black Chamber, Hispanic Chamber, Asian Chamber, Native American Chamber, prime subcontractors, professional services, goods and general services, and subcontractors. Over the course of those meetings, we had several input opportunities, and Mr. Keeney is going to speak to you on the feedback you received regarding those issues. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the subcommittee, uh, I, I want to jump in and just talk about, uh, Don talked about that we had some stakeholder input opportunities, and, and um, we had several of those, not just um, in, dating back to August 2015. We had some prior to the one-year extension that we're operating under right now. And even up to last week, we had some um, discussions with the, with the outreach, uh, connecting outreach with our stakeholders with the, in the program. And out of this, we, we had a number of uh, potential enhancements that we discussed with um, our oversight committee. Uh, we have an SBE oversight committee that was put, uh, put together as part of the SBE program um, back in 2010. And with that oversight committee, we discussed these enhancements. Um, one of them was, uh, we kind of break them out into probably two major enhancements. One is in, in the business certification program right now. Um, city staff certifies all um, small businesses that are coming in interested in doing business with the city. Um, that involves a lot of paperwork and a lot of information that is provided by those firms. Um, and city staff spends a lot of time um, re reviewing those and also uh, making sure that those are um, leg legitimate um, small businesses before they're certified. That does take a, a, a time period, a process, um, to be able to get those firms certified. And so there's, there were some concerns on, on um, whether that creates a barrier of entry um, for firms as we have procurements that are open that may people may be interested in participating on but may, may not be currently certified as a small business. So we, wanna, we were looking for opportunities as a way to be able to streamline the process in there. Um, but, but a lot of um, other programs in the country you have um, that maybe you have city or agency certifications going on, you've gone the, almost the other extreme, which is just self-registration, where somebody goes to a website and, and clicks a couple um, boxes and, and signs an affidavit that they're a small business. Now, there's concerns. Obviously, we have a long history with this program here with the City of Phoenix, and it, it is known for its integrity and how we go about our process. And so we want to make sure, if we're going to make any enhancements in this area, we want to make sure it's done um, with the full cooperation of, of our industry stakeholders, our pr uh, program um, um, the people who are in the program right now, and also working with city staff and elected officials as well. Um, the second major um, uh, enhancement we were looking at is, is expanding the program right now, at least on the construction subcontracting goals program. Um, it is open just to contractors who, um, uh, subcontractors who work on construction contracts. Um, that, that has some history be before we became a race and gender neutral program back in 2010 fully. Um, before that, we had a minority and women-owned business enterprise program, and we had disparity studies uh, associated with how we determined um, where there was disparity in, in certain areas of contracting. Um, but because of those disparity studies, we sh saw that there was just uh, we could only go through a con um, goals program in construction subcontracting. So if we have architects or engineers we're hiring, or even contractors who are SBEs that we're hiring, um, we could not count their participation as such um, in a formal goals program. Uh, so we were looking for opportunities we, 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 to be able to expand our program um, now that they're, we're race and gender neutral to be able to expand it beyond just construction subcontracting. Um, so those are the two major enhancements, and we're probably about another eight more minor ones that are kind of fall under those two major program enhancements. But I think as we're going through this, and, and Don's going to elaborate a little bit here, is, is these enhancements are still good and worth talking about. Um, I think it's a little bit too early to unveil those enhancements and talk about how we're potentially going to bring them into the program. But I think we want to make sure that the one-year program 
um, an extension that we're operating right now that expires in June 2016, that we have the opportunity to be able to get the program extended because that was something we heard loud and clear from the industry. They want to continue the program. But we want to obviously continue to discussing the enhancements with our oversight committee with industry stakeholders and potentially bring additional enhancements um, later um, after we get the extension. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Ed. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, as we reflected on the proposed enhancements, it, it uh, resulted in us taking a look at our program and, and personally for me as someone who worked outside the organization and had a perception or image of the City of Phoenix uh, certification program, I would tell you that the program is very well recognized and represented, uh, respected across the country. And in discussing this with, with staff and others, we probably haven't done as, as, as good a job as we probably could in terms of marketing the fact that the SBE program was built and modeled behind the city's or the national DBE program, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, which 2014 was recognized by USDOT, United States Department of Transportation, Office of Inspection General, as the number one ranked uh, agency in its appreciation and support of small businesses, disadvantaged businesses. So we felt collectively that given all of the enhancements that we were considering and the timeline associated with coming back with the sunset and, and, and accommodating that ordinance provision, that rather than rush that through, we'd come back, ask for an extension that will allow us to continue to engage with our stakeholders, look for ways in which we can look to uh, improve and continue to improve the SBE program. So today we, we come to you with a recommendation uh, to request that the subcommittee recommend to the city council approval for continuation of the SBE program, enterprise uh, program until June 2020, a four year extension, amend the city code chapter 18 to allow a four year extension to that effect. And it would give us the opportunity to continue to uh, vet through the program, look for ways to uh, sustain and, and, and accommodate the needs of our small business community. Yeah, Greg. For, for the record, uh, uh, the, the slide should read June 30, 2020. All right. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. We do have several cards um, from members of the community who would like to speak. If that's okay with my uh, colleagues, maybe take the comment cards first, and then we'll take uh, comments and questions from my colleagues. Uh, first speaker uh, in favor, Alice Morrow. Uh, you could uh, join us at the microphone. been doing work with the city for a long, long time, and I know a number of people on staff here and uh, some of the great projects. I think I was looking back at the record. I was certified in 2000. So um, often when we have meetings, it comes up that we're on a list, and maybe people don't realize that they're getting work because we're on that list. Well, I do. One of our biggest jobs ever was to be the prime uh, refrographic firm for Parsons Brinkerhoff for the t first 20 miles of light rail maintenance and storage and all the park and rides. It was wonderful. It was like a once in a lifetime job. Um, we also did the all-star game. I think it was here in 09. We worked on the convention center. Um, we do a lot of outreach ourselves. We are members of AMCA. Ricardo's here. If I don't feel comfortable with something going on, I pick up the phone and call him. And I pay back to him by sponsoring events for his company, his organization rather. We're also members of WTS. If you ever want to come to a meeting, you don't have to be a member. Kenny um, was at a meeting last month or the month before, talking about 2050. Um, we're proud sponsors of um, academic career days. Some of you come, it's at the um, base on McDowell. I think last year we had uh, over 200 high schools attend. So we give back to people in construction because we believe in it. It's very unusual for um, a small person like me 
to be in construction and let alone transportation. It's mostly you big guys. And this opens up the playing field for me and lets me go in. And I'll be happy to take any questions. I know a number of people I work with trans dev, so I fill out all the forms and do all the work. If there's anything you need to know from me or have questions, okay. Thank, You're thank welcome. you very much for your time, Ms. Morrow. Next is Adam Morris. In favor? Hi, good morning, guys. Morning. Hi. My name is Adam Morris, and uh, this program, I went to Arizona State University. I'll give you a little history of how I started. And uh, when I was going to school, I interned for a construction company. And while I was doing that, I saw a little niche for street sweeping. So my brother and I, we bought two street sweepers and a friend of ours owned a paving company and he let us park our street sweepers in their yard and we lay out cardboard to change the oils and the brushes and all that. And then eventually we got big enough to we got a little shop. And at that point, we reached out to a lady named Rosemary at Hansel Phelps and she was in charge of the Sky Harbor train for 44th Street Station to Terminal uh, 4. And so for there, she had an outreach program. We met with her and she explained the SBE program. We had no idea about it. We got involved with it, met with John Ojito. He kind of walked us through, met with us, came to our shop, did the whole interview. It was really extensive. I mean, we had to turn in a serious amount of credentials about our backgrounds, how much money we had, any financials or anything. And from the program, it really opened us up to get opportunities for projects. I used to call estimators all the time and say, hey, I'm a street sweeping company. Can I entertain a bid? They would say, no, thank you. Then I would call back later and say, hey, I'm an SBE company, can I bid? Oh, yes, 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 we need SBE guys, hold on a second. And I really got an opportunity to get in with these companies. And these are the big guys like Kiwit and Sun and Hansel Phelps and Banneke and CSNW. And those are the guys that, you know, they really do the amount of damage in the, in the valley for, you know, paving and asphalt and that type of stuff. And so without this program, I'll be honest, we probably would not be near the size that we are now we have 40 employees now. When I started SPE, we probably had about seven employees, and there were a couple of my friends, and they were helping me wrench at night and stuff like that. And so I'm a real prime example that this does work. And it was a great opportunity. And for others that started off just like my brother and I in the back of some guy's yard, laying on cardboard, getting to the size that we're at, you know, it's, it's a success. And, I just, and I'm glad to share it with you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. OK. Yes, please. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, it's great to hear the success story. But also, I appreciate you taking your own time to come down here to tell us that. Because it would be easy for you to just sort of take the winning, so to speak, and then not come and tell us. It's very helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah, and Mr. Knutson, I think it was Knutz, was it? And he did mention, you know, the, the, the background is extensive. I mean, we had to turn in everything from every bank account we ever had to, to make sure that we weren't someone trying to take advantage of the system and that we weren't some millionaires or had some outside funding or, or whatever, to, you know, to get into the system. And so when I was listening to that, I, I was really proud to hear that you guys are still doing that and you're still making it a, a big point to, to get out there and do the background on these guys. And so thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, I probably should have had the clock on just because we have several uh, speakers. So just so you know, from this point on, we're going to put three minutes on there. Should be plenty of time for everyone to make the comments they'd like. Next is Rita Lawrence in favor. I would like to thank you all for inviting me in to share my story of the SBE program. I've been in it 15 years. We started, um, my husband and I, had to come out of retirement in 2001 we lost everything we lost all of our income we lost our retirement we lost everything the only thing we had was money in the bank in the savings account i got certified as sbe and we started filling potholes for the city through a, a gc and we we bought a truck raking shovels and hired a few guys and we started filling potholes now we have proud to say we have three asphalt pavers and we are a main player at all airports we work at sky harbor deer valley scottsdale uh, mesa gateway goodyear we work at all the airports 
and would have never, never accomplished this without the SBE program. It put me in in, pro, in outreach programs. They would hold outreach where we could come and meet GCs and develop re relationships, and w we would have never, never been a success as we are right now. And I can't thank this program enough. Uh, during the downturn, uh, we held on by our fingernails. The bank shut us down. Our suppliers wanted money every 30 days, and it was a nightmare. But the city stepped in, this department stepped in, and helped me collect my retainage. Because if they didn't step in and help you collect retainage, that GC is never just going to give it to you. you it's never going to happen. So that was a big asset in helping me get through the downturn was the city helping me collect my retainage. So uh, I, I, I can't say enough good about the program. I too went through all the scrutiny as a woman in construction. She can't be real. It's gotta be somebody behind her. But I 100% I own her and I have a construction background. So I know what I'm doing and I love this program. Yeah, I hope it, I don't, my company, l l Asphalt, does not have to ride off in the sunset. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. Any questions from my colleagues? All right, next we have Eddie Arandondo uh, in favor. Good morning. Morning. My name is Eddie Arredondo. I am the operation manager at Variety Paint and Body Inc. We have been uh, SB certified for several years now. Um, I do want to say that the process is a good process because they do they check you out. They do want to make sure that um, you are legit. And um, uh, we are very grateful at Variety Paint and Body for this program because it has opened doors for us. Um, with companies that without this program, we probably wouldn't be doing any work for. Um, when I look back in time, you know, we stay pretty busy because we work on everything, trailers, city buses, cutaways, uh, small vehicles, whatever. But sometimes I remember looking out to our yard and I'm like, hey, you know what? You know, this, should, this, this time of the year should kind of be a little slow, but you know, we got work here. And when I look out, I can recall that the business that we had that kept us going was, was the companies that use us because we are SBE certified. So we are, we are grateful for that. And I wanna um, encourage and I pray and I hope that this program moves forward because it has been a great benefit to our company. We're a small company where uh, we have about like 10 employees. Um, we hope to keep on growing but um, this program is great for us. So I just wanted to come down and I wanted to share that. And um, I look forward to the expansion of the program. And, um, and that's it. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? No. All right, thank you so much thank for you. your testimony. You're welcome. Appreciate thank it. You. Mm -hmm. Next is uh, Christy Carpenter in favor. Morning. Um, my name is Christy Carpenter. I'm the president of RJC Contracting, and we've been in the SBE program since 2004, back when it was uh, MBE, WBE program. And I wanted to share with you a couple of <coughs> the obstacles that, as a small business owner that we face, I'm sure that many small business owners faced. Um, as you know, a big percentage of small businesses never make it. And two of the biggest obstacles that, that I have faced, that the SBE program has helped me with are in the beginning. Um, getting your foot in the door with some of these big prime contractors is difficult. They have no incentive to break up the work to help small businesses participate on some of these big City of Phoenix projects. And so the SBE program uh, encourages them to uh, help with bonding, help with many aspects that are, that are difficult for a small business to, to do in the beginning of a project. That's one of the biggest obstacles that I faced as a small business owner was getting my foot in the door. The other big obstacle that I faced was cash flow and issues regarding getting paid and resolving contract issues. And the SBE program has a great oversight <coughs> into this where they 
encourage uh, the, gen the general contractors to work with you through any issues you have. They also encourage them to pay you promptly to release retention earlier than they normally would. And those issues, cash flow is a huge issue for us when we first got started. And I, and I don't know if we would have made it if we hadn't had the SBE program overseeing that process and ensuring that they addressed issues promptly and paid us promptly. And I would really like to see, we've been in it for at least 10 years now, and I'd really like to see this program stay in place for those other small businesses out there just getting started, facing those obstacles that we faced. And we're in a, we're in a much better position than we were when we started and have participated on some great projects out of Sky Harbor. We built a big percentage of the perimeter security wall around Sky Harbor Airport um, as one of our big projects. And we really appreciated the help that we got from the small business uh, program here with the city. Any, pr any questions for me? Any questions? All right, thank you so much for your thank testimony. You. Next speaker in favor is Rondi Keck. Kekarain? Katurian, yeah, that's what I said, right? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yes, I am Rondi Katurian. I'm president and CEO of Caliente Ironworks. We are a steel erection company, certified welding, on site fabrication. We also do steel sales. And um, we started out as a sole proprietorship about 20 years ago. I incorporated in 2003, and I heard about the SBE program, and I said, well, I'll apply. As you've heard other people say, it took me two years to get all the paperwork <laughs> together, um, but it was an efficient process. I had people come to my home and to look at everything, so I know that the process was, was very, very well vetted. What it has done for me is this. It's given me opportunity, as other people have said. It's about opportunity. I had tried for many years to go get some of these jobs, the you know, municipal jobs, state jobs, whatever. Don't want to hear from you. And I understand that because I'm afraid to use a different contract or a different, you know, cement guy or drywall or because you don't know. It's an unknown quantity. Nobody wants to risk it because time is money. But the SB program forced them to look at me, as, as, as unpleasant as that sound it did. But I knew I was good. I knew if I could get in the door that they would use me, SBE or not, they would use me. And it's, that's been the case. I've had work ever since. It's not about handing me something. It gave me an opportunity. I got my foot in the door. And I have worked harder since then because of the SBE program. And if it wasn't for the SBE program, I probably still wouldn't be in business when the downturn came. It also made me, oddly enough, a better contractor. <laughs> taught me how to bid, understand the bid process, taught me how to manage my money, which was the critical thing, as a couple of people have said here. You know, the money in the beginning is the hardest thing of all. And then there's so much opportunity in them, uh, in the SBE, that they give you you know, there's meet and greets, there's workshops, there's all kind of different areas for you to make your company better and bigger if that's what you want. And, if, and, and it really is about the people at the SBE that have helped me. Just as a, an antidote, I got finished on a job with a very large contractor in mid-April. Mid-April, November, I still hadn't received my retainage. I called, email, ah, eh, we'll get it to you maybe January, maybe February. I had to talk to the SBE about a, some other issue and I happened to mention it. Within 48 hours, that money was in my checking account. That never would have happened. These guys have no incentive. It's not that they're bad, it's just, you know, we're not all that important. So <clears throat> what I wanted to say is this program is important. I watch my boys roll out every morning. They have families, they have children. And because of the SBE, I can continue to give them food on their table consistently because I know there are SBE jobs out there and that I can bid on. And the contractors, the big GCs like me now. They know me. So this program is really important, and it falls on the shoulders of the SBE people. Um, Susan Sweden is here and David Ortega, and I have a very well long-term relationship with, uh, with Tim Farnsworth. He's helped me over a lot of sticky wickets, okay? And there have been quite a few. But if it wasn't for them, I don't know where I'd be. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Please continue this program, because I'm not the only one who needs it. We all need it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next in favor is Milagros Gonzalez Scott. Good morning. morning. My name is Milagros Gonzalez Scott, and I own the Scott Business Group along with my husband. 
we're a staffing and recruiting company, and we provide recruiting in the areas of engineering, IT, as well as administrative and some like construction. Uh, we have been in business since 2003, and we have been certified since 2003 when we started. And the reason I'm still standing here, my business still standing, is because of the SBE program. Back in the days, it was the MBE, WBE. But the bottom line is, in the business of staffing in particular, is extremely competitive. And uh, we have, even now, have challenges getting in the door in the private sector. Uh, if it wasn't for the city of Phoenix opening doors for us, we will have even less experience in the private sector, allowing us to grow, not just with the government um, experience. Uh, as far as the City of Phoenix SBE program, it is incredible, meaningful to us. When we started our company, one of our goals was to hire people locally and disadvantage. And we started working initially with CAST. And we worked with them a program where they, we knew that they would drive the people to work and pick them up and they would show up for some of the construction jobs that were out there. So our goal has always been giving back to the community. We hired vets and we work with the community uh, bringing people to work, people from the AWI, AWI, which is the women organization that is helping um, women to get into the job force as well getting into business. So the bottom line for me, it's been not only that we have been able to grow our organization, but also that we have been able to reach out and help others in the community. I want to say thank you to the uh, folks at the SBE program, like Joan Ojeda, and I also want to shout to Valerie Churchill, because just to give you an example, recently we had, uh, she had the three minute presentation that you were supposed to do to all these different companies that were there for the contract for the uh, wind park, uh, um, the parking, the valet parking at, at, um, at Sky Harbor. Well, you know, the contract hasn't even gone out. And because we met these people, we're currently doing business with three different companies that were able to see us, and we would never have been seen if it wasn't because they were forced to be there and they could look at the SBE that were there presenting and choosing from them. We're not asking for a handout. We're asking for the opportunity to have our doors open and be given the same chance as anybody else. So I thank you very much, and if you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your testimony. And our final card here in favor is Arizona Mike Faison. Faison. My apologies. I might be adding a suffix to that uh, because the uh, life expectancy report for the nation came out this morning and black men are living longer. Also, Hispanics have the longest lifespan of all ethnic groups. So that's where I might be changing the suffix to my last name. <laughs> there are some downsides. Uh, uh, white women have lost uh, some lifespan by just a few points. But uh, we're all one community, so we're working together uh, to increase uh, what we're able to do as a um, as a people but uh, I'm coming from a different perspective because I'm representing the people that aren't here uh, I'm sure that there's probably maybe manifold people that are out there that are certified that didn't get contracts I didn't get a contract with the city there was one gentleman who joined a group that I formed uh, that uh, was at the meeting that they had in 2015. Since there were 10 people, he and I uh, constituted 20% of that uh, group. But um, we are in favor of this program because it's not just about getting contracts, just as some have said, those who have gotten contracts, and that doesn't mean one will never get contracts. As long as the program exists, that possibility is there. But here's the important thing. It is a calling card. Now, I started 
uh, with the city uh, and dealing with the city in 1996 with the first Super Bowl that came here. I've been involved with every Super Bowl and I have watched it grow. I've been involved with the NFL in trying to figure out how to make the uh, Business Connect type programs that they're doing work better. And I came up with some ideas which they asked me to use uh, uh, to try as a proof of concept. So what I'm doing in, in um, starting the Arizona Stone Soup Initiative is when the final four comes next year, that's the last opportunity we have to do something as a community, to combine the business and the residential community to get to know each other. So we're going to uh, establish a uh, four regions of the valley, a uh, valley-wide hospitality campaign with three-on-three -three pickup basketball tournaments. And they will play, each quadrant will play each other, and we will publicize what we're doing to the rest of the world so that all the rancor that they envision about Arizona, we can dispel. I like to ask this one question as rhetorical. How much did you learn about Houston from their Final Four this year? Think about it. Thank you very Any much. Any questions, by the way? Any questions? From this particular perspective of those who don't get contracts but still think it's a good program. All right. Thank you very much. We do have another speaker here. Just received this card uh, in favor, Ricardo Carlo. Council and everybody here, I want to thank you for providing me the opportunity to come speak to you about the SBE program, prior to M&W program. Um, been with the AMCA for about 11 and a half years. I've been with the Oversight Committee for over 10. Um, seen the changes that have come about. Uh, when we did away with the M&W program, there was a lot of fear in the community that the opportunities would go away. Keeping the SBE program kept that faith alive and it still kept the constituents and, and the people that we serve still part of the program and able to get some work. Now, we've heard some good testimonials about the program itself. I can reiterate a lot of that because we do represent the small business community. And I also have, to have counterparts on a national level that talk about the program, the SB program here, that is the model for the nation to follow. So I can attribute that to what Mr. Logan said as well. So I do have that firsthand experience. Um, we have talked about going into a different program that was a self-certifying program. Um, there were some concerns um, that the scrutiny of the process would be lost. With the SBE program, we maintain that scrutiny, ensuring that small business enterprises are small business enterprises and they get the opportunities. Now, like the gentleman just mentioned earlier, not everybody gets an opportunity with the city of Phoenix, but because of that SBE certification, there are other organizations and large companies that look at that certification and provide opportunity. But most importantly, the other thing is, is that the educational aspect that comes with this certification, the MTA program that helps with management training assistance, all of the Equal Opportunity Department is there to help you with any questions that you have. This is a viable program that I feel that we cannot afford to let go or release. And I'm asking, you know, on behalf of myself and also our community as a whole, if they give me the permission, that we continue this program until September, uh, until June 30th, 2020, uh, because it is a legally defensible program. We don't have to look at doing another disparity study because it is legally defensible. It's in place, it works, it's recognized on a national level, and I think we need to continue to be that model for the entire nation to follow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice, nice summary of, of the testimony we've heard. Um, with that, those are all the cards that we have. I'd turn it over to my colleagues for any questions or comments. Council Nowakowski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming out and telling us the real Phoenix story, because that's what Phoenix is all about. It's about small businesses, and I like that quote that was on the slide. Um, small businesses mean um, big business for the city of Phoenix. It really does. And then what you do for a community, how you reach out to all those little leagues and baseball teams and soccer teams. And, you know, you see your names on the back of those jerseys. And it's because you were given an opportunity. Now you're passing on that opportunity to others. Uh, when you walk into our airport and you see all those small businesses, local small businesses, and people comment about how the great food is at, at our airport, it's because of the local business and the, and the construction going on there too and how people take care of, uh, I guess you're, the time's you're up. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and, and true ambassadors. 
when you walk through the airport and you see individuals working and it's a construction site, but it's not really a construction site. People are saying hi and, oh, go ahead, go through and this and this and that. It's really because you care. You live here, you, you want, you raising your family here, and you care about our city. So I really want to thank this program for the opportunities that making the, the field um, an equal opportunity field for everyone and connecting these big um, general contractors to, to the small businesses. I mean, that's the key. And how these small businesses sometimes become those big contractors in the future and, and opens up opportunities all around. So thank you so much. I'll be supporting it 100%. And I think um, we need to tell our story not just here in Phoenix, but throughout the country. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Other comments? Councilman Valenzuela. I want to thank everyone who came out to speak from the small business sector because I know it's not, and I know it's it's not that simple. Uh, someone someone has to hold down the shop while you're here, so uh, so we appreciate it. We realize, and I mean, I realize that this is where most of our neighbors work in the small business sector. You're employing uh, most of our families, and uh, and I. And I sincerely thank you for, for taking the interest to come out and, and to talk about this particular program. I want to thank our, our team here, our, our city staff, uh, for being so entrenched in the community and trying to figure out what would work in the community and always trying to figure out a way to, to, to make it better. So, uh, you know, I, I, I got to be honest, I, I've always believed in this program. I will continue to believe and support in, uh, this, uh, this program. but listening to all the speakers come up and, and I really hope uh, you know I want to congratulate you all uh, because you're, you're helping to make that work and when it comes down to it you're the ones who are putting this stuff uh, together and then we review it and we'll challenge you and and at the end of the day we'll vote on it but you know you're, the, the product it's a it's a great product and it's proven and it seems to be working so thank you for all your hard work and um, then I, I will also be uh, supportive, absolutely. Thank you, Councilman. Any other comments? I'll cede my three minutes to the... Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I should make fun. I'd be the worst offender, so I, I'm glad they don't take that out. Um, I would echo the, the comments of my colleagues and, and just add, you know, it's one thing to, to say that you support small business. That's kind of easy to do. This is the hard work, is, is, is putting it into practice and kudos to, to everyone in our staff for, for the hard work that has been done and, and congratulations to all the wonderful small businesses who are making a difference, employing people in our community. And, and I think uh, based upon what I'm hearing here, this program has a bright future uh, moving ahead in, in the city of Phoenix. Anything further? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion. You know, before I make the motion, I just really want to thank um, Ricardo and your organization for continuous advocating for small businesses and in all levels. So thank you, Ricardo, for everything you do. With that, I'd like to approve staff's recommendation to continue this program. Second. We have a, a motion and a second. Again, this is to expand the uh, or continue the SBE program through June 30th of 2020. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Thanks to everybody who came out today. That takes us now to item five, which is the excess city-owned uh, property update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just say as we uh, move to this, this is an item that the subcommittee should be uh, very proud of because the subcommittee's really been the driver behind our ability to identify and dispose of property. So we're here to give you an update on a couple specific ones. Also talk about our RFP process and then tell you that next month we will come back with a more comprehensive report of all of our property that Mary Vivian Withrow is working on, but it is a big task, isn't it? So with that, our uh, a fin a, a Deputy Finance Director for uh, Properties, Mary Vivian Withrow, will start this off. Thank you, Ed, and uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. It's a pleasure to be back. Most of all, we uh, wanted to uh, let you know what's been going on. We haven't seen you for a few months. And lest you think we have uh, been derelict in our duties, we have indeed um, continued to pursue properties as they are identified as excess. We, I think in the report, provided you with a short summary of 
to date, 28 properties have been approved by the City Council for disposal. Um, those have ranged from large parcels of 10 acres plus, very valuable, to very tiny remnants. We have disposed of, in real estate, 17 of those have been sold. Six of those are the really exciting stuff that our capable colleagues in CED handle. Um, and, and so there are five remaining. But we're, we're focusing on the continued diligence of just the day-to-day -day identifying properties that are unused and underutilized. And, and we honestly do that each and every day. Jamie Spear, who heads up the property management section in real estate, every time we get a call from a constituent asking about a piece of city-owned property, we follow up with the department and say, is this anything you could consider, even though it's not on, on, an, on our radar or your radar? So we are pushing as much as we can push. But the other piece of this is, obviously, the city owns a lot of property for a reason, and much of that is, is in very productive and good use. So having said all of that, we have two small parcels today to talk about that we would ask your recommendation to dispose of. And then as the report references, we anticipate a number of other things coming forward in coming months from departments individually, and then ultimately in, in 12 to 18 months when aviation's comprehensive reuse study is done, that should yield um, some illuminating information that would maybe help us take a more comprehensive and large approach with aviation properties. So um, first property is 1901 Cherry Lynn Road. It is a 5,000 square foot residential property that is excess, was acquired originally as part of right of way. And so we would recommend that you um, authorize disposal of that parcel. This is sitting on the uh, Piestawa Peak Parkway? It is, yes. And the second parcel is the is at 1250 South Seventh, which is the Central Head Start building. I don't know if we can flip. Right there. Yeah, no, I just was looking at this to see if we could put the slide, but oh, you have the right there. There. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Um, this and Mo Gallego is here. If if you'd like to discuss further what they're doing with this, this is fully occupied. It's a Central Head Start building, but uh, Human Services is trying to be very strategic about this, saying we don't fully need the building, and, and they have already identified where they would disperse staff that are working in this building. But we don't want to empty the building until we sell it, because HUD funding pro provides a significant source of the operating and maintenance fees. So, so um, Human Services, to their credit, is being very strategic about this, but it is an asset that they have been very diligent in identifying and finding alternative spots for the folks who occupy it. So that will be a substantial parcel to put on the market. And we would, again, recommend that Jones Lang LaSalle handle this rather than doing it through an RFP. But we certainly welcome your input. Wonderful. Uh, questions or comments from my colleagues, Councilman Nowkowski? So on this piece of property, don't we actually use the retail just on the north side of it as a senior center? Mo, would you like to, less I misspeak. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilman Nowakowski, yes, that is correct. The uh, uh, Senior Opportunity West uh, Senior Center is across the way in the strip. But my question. It's not, it's, not part of this property. it's not part of this property for sale, right? No, it is not. No, but my question is, um, why are we renting uh, space in a retail area unless we're getting it donated and we have our own property right next door and where we can actually have multi purpose for that building that that would need that councilman Nowakowski, mm -hmm. that would uh, require research of course but i would say that the square footage is one issue the other issue is the remodeling as you know you know what senior centers look like right. you've been at many of them a very open uh, floor plan very open space uh, a serving kitchen, uh, SOW has, as all of them do that are not uh, uh, cooking kitchens. And so uh, it would probably be very costly. This is just my layman's right. Right. Uh, estimate, if you will. But uh, I believe that, that it, would, it would be uh, uh, very costly to do so. That's right. just my Thank you. Other questions or comments? All right, so we, we actually have uh, a, a, a 
request here of the subcommittee that we approve uh, the sale of both of these properties. Yes. And it would be jo uh, Jones Lang LaSalle on this one. As well as the Cheerlin is staff's recommendation. Clearly, we welcome the subcommittee's input if you have alternative okay. suggestions. So we, have, we currently have a contract authorized by the council with Jones Lang LaSalle to be our broker. Your recommendation would be to use them to broker these properties. Correct. Thoughts from my colleagues, questions? Motion to approve staff's recommendation of selling two properties using um, Jones and Lasari. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any discussion? Okay, great. Um, uh, any questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that brings us to the a call to the public. We, we don't have any cards for a call to the public. Uh, future agenda items. All the members of the subcommittee have a list of uh, several future agenda items. Any others that uh, folks would like to add to these? Yes, Council Nowakowski. You know, seeing that we have so much property, we have just one um, realtor out there um, marking it. Can we look into what is the possibility of having a handful of different realtors out there trying to push our properties, trying to get the best price for for those properties, and maybe having a bigger network out there looking for um, um, individuals that would want to purchase um, city properties. I think more the better, and competition's good. Yeah. All right. So we can definitely add that to a future uh, future discussion. Good idea. Any other uh, issues that people would like to see in the future subcommittee? All right. Oh, you know, one yes. other thing is um, the whole driplet um, process um, and what is, do we have some type of guidelines or some type of policy for the future when it comes to a community purpose? Because sometimes that community purpose is so vague that we really don't understand what that is. And then um, right now we're going through the um, circles um, property within my, within my district and some people are saying it should be historic um, emphasis on community purpose. Others are saying a parking solution. Others are saying affordability or workforce housing. So, you know, as a council member, I think having some type of guidelines. So when you have developers come in and they come up with their own community purpose, we already have a guideline of what those purposes should be for the future. Yeah, I think that's uh, obviously a very timely issue right now. So maybe we can look at whether you know this is the place for that discussion, whether it's a downtown subcommittee or, or wherever. But uh, I think it's a very, uh, very important issue to be looking at closer. Anything else? All right, with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.